Mathematics is about making connections. And today, I want to make some connections between geometry and algebra. Now, the end result, the goal that we're getting to, not particularly deep, right? We're going to be thinking about elements of order three, elements of order six. But I think what's really cool is to see some of these connections between the geometry and the algebra. So let's get started with the geometry. Uh, here is a picture of the complex plane. I've got one. I've got minus one. I've got i. I've got minus i. And I've also uh, put down this other point, r. And r is a primitive third root of unity. What do I mean by that? Well, take a look at what r squared is. And I can multiply r by itself just by rotating. Right? Multiplication in the complex plane is a combination of a rotation and a scaling. The length, the norm of r is 1. So there's no scaling involved. It's just all rotation. So when I rotate uh, r through this angle of 120 degrees to compute r squared, I find out that r squared is just the complex conjugate of r. Now, if I multiply r squared by r, I then discover that r cubed is equal to 1. Now, I can take that point r and I can negate it by reflecting it through the origin. And what I end up with, I'm calling it s, that's a sixth root of unity. So let's see this. I start with s. I take s squared. That's the same thing as r squared. I take s cubed and I get negative 1. Then I take s to the fourth and I find out that's r. I take s to the fifth, I take s to the sixth, and I find out that s to the sixth is 1. Well, here's another thing I could do. I could take r and I could add 1 to it. I'll call that t. And t is also a sixth root of unity. And I can check that by computing t squared, t to the third, t to the fourth, t to the fifth, and finally noting that t to the sixth is equal to 1. So what's the upshot here? What is this geometry supposed to be telling us? Well, when I start with 1, r, and r squared, I've got the corners of an equilateral triangle. And r is a primitive third root of unity, right? So hopefully that makes sense. Now, when I take r and I reflect it through the origin, then I get a point I'm calling s. And s, along with its powers, produces for me a regular hexagon. But I could also have produced that regular hexagon another way. I could have started with the point r and then added 1 to it in order to get a point I'm calling t. And t, along with its powers, also produces for me that regular hexagon. Now we can see the same kind of story through some algebra. I'll start with a primitive third root of unity, and either by negating it or by adding 1 to it, I'll end up with a primitive sixth root of unity. So to see this, uh, let's start with p, some prime, and we'll be working in z mod p, the integers modulo p. r is, again, a primitive third root of unity. But algebraically, what that means is that r is a root of x squared plus x plus 1. Now I'll define s to be negative r. And my claim is that s to the 6th is equal to 1, but s, s squared, s to the 3rd are not equal to 1. All right, that's just saying that the multiplicative order of s is equal to 6. It's saying that s is a primitive 6th root of unity. So is s equal to 1? Well, if s were equal to 1, then r would have to equal negative 1. But negative 1 isn't a root of x squared plus x plus 1. Uh, why not? Well, because 1 isn't equal to 0. So it must be that s isn't 1. Now we can check that s squared is equal to r squared, and r squared isn't equal to 1 because r is a primitive third root of unity. And I can verify that s cubed is equal to minus 1, and minus 1 isn't 1 uh, because I'm, say, working in z mod p, and p isn't 2. And finally, we see that s to the sixth is 1. Now, the algebra there certainly wasn't very deep, but it does raise a broader question. If you've got an element of order n and an element of order m, and you take their product, well, what's the order of their product? I hope that's something you've been thinking about. Now, we can do the same kind of game. Uh, this time, instead of taking r and negating it to get s, we'll take r and we'll add 1 to it to get t, another primitive sixth root of unity. So let's suppose that r is, again, a root of x squared plus x plus 1. So that means that r squared plus r plus 1 is equal to 0. Now we'll set t equal to r plus 1. Now geometrically, uh, remember that r was sitting on the corner of that equilateral triangle, and r plus 1 was sitting then at the corner of this regular hexagon. So we're thinking that t should have order 6. Now we can recover facts about powers of t just from the algebra and uh, using the fact that r is a root of uh, x squared plus x plus 1. So let's see how this goes. t squared is r plus 1, quantity squared, which expands to r squared plus 2r plus 1. And then uh, we'll note this, r squared plus 2r plus 1, that's r squared plus r plus 1, all plus r. But r squared plus r plus 1 vanishes, so t squared is just equal to r. 
Let's do this with t cubed. So t cubed is, well, it's r plus 1 times t squared because t is r plus 1. And t squared we just saw was equal to r. So t cubed is r plus 1 times r. Distributivity then gives me that's r squared plus r plus 1 minus 1. And r squared plus r plus 1, that vanishes because r is a root of that polynomial, x squared plus x plus 1. So t cubed is equal to minus 1. Doing some more algebra reveals that t to the fourth is equal to r squared and that t to the sixth is equal to one. You may not be very impressed with this computation, but let me remind you, this computation is not happening in the complex plane. This computation is, say, happening in z mod p. You know, so we made this computation go just by using the fact that r satisfies this polynomial identity, that r squared plus r plus one equals zero. And just by using that polynomial identity, we can conclude things like t cubed equals minus one. And that's the sense in which this is an algebraic argument, right? We're using the fact that r satisfies certain polynomial identities to deduce certain things, rather than you know, drawing some kind of geometric picture in the complex plane. I don't want to oversell these results either, but it is an interesting result, right? You're in z mod p, and you've got an element of order 3. That gives you a root of x squared plus x plus 1. And with that root in hand, we can produce for ourselves an element of order 6. So if you've got an element of order 3, then you get an element of order 6.